Hi, I'm Tony Klein. I'm the runner in this video, and when we decided to document my journey through the Moab 240 Endurance Run, we wanted to make sure that we captured the good, the bad, and the ugly, and I think that's what we've done. We didn't want to simply give you a highlight reel of my best moments while I was there, but rather show you what it was like for me to go day after day, night after night, trying to accomplish this crazy feat of finishing the Moab 240 Endurance Run. So this is what we put together for you. We hope you enjoy it. Take a look. I sent Brandon on ahead, my pacer, so I could cap this moment by myself. So I'm struggling with a couple of things. When I came out here, I said there was only gonna be two ways to get off this course. First one was to finish. And the second one was to be timed out so meaning I miss a cutoff at an aid station or something like that but I mean at this point the ankles in pretty bad shape so I'm struggling with how stubborn do I want to be there's there's a chance I could still make all the cutoffs and the finish but I have to get this taken care of at every aid station. They're going to have to ice or elevate. So, you know, that's an hour at least at the aid station to try to minimize that. And so, how much do I want to do for that? How much... Uh, suffering and misery do I want to go through and how much damage do I want to do to my body to then miss the cutoff so that's a real big internal struggle especially when you factor in you know what Pam told me was have fun be smart be safe like I don't know I still have like 103 miles to go something like that, like around 100. So, I don't know what to do. I mean, I'm still out here, I'm still moving, but I mean, here's, here's the leg so far. Take a look at that. Stays. See that? These indentations. <laughs> Money shot. Right there. Yeah, good one. Ooh, keep it PG 13, boys. changes with a 200 miler but this year was 
definitely a doozy. So thank you guys so much for being patient uh, with the snow course and uh, all the other kind of adjustments we've had to make um, with the fire this summer um, and making sure that we had uh, a safe course for you guys, especially with the weather forecast as it is. Um, the right thing to do is to put you a little lower on the LaSalle Mountains. So um, hopefully you don't have some huge storm out there and the weather forecast is wrong, but if you do, you will be in a lot safer uh, spot down lower on that mountain. So um, wishing you guys good luck out there. And uh, we'll do as per the usual. You guys repeat after me. If I get lost, if I get lost, hurt, hurt. Or die, or die. It's my own damn fault. It's my own damn fault. All right. Good luck out there, you guys. We're gonna do the national anthem now. Yeah, Phil. There we go. All right. Let's keep the voices down. Let's do the national anthem. Oh, can you see by the dawn? What so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare. Bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave for oh, the land of the free? and the home of the minutes so far. Here's where we're headed. The sun came up. Needed our headlamp for mm, probably close to the first hour. Not much after that. So here's where we're at. Yeah, those guys back there. <laughs> we're heading up over here. So we've just passed Hidden Valley Aid Station and we're on our way to Amasa back at 17.8 miles. Okay, eight miles in. Just left the first aid station. It's down over there. And uh, we're headed up here. Up here, everybody's still in pretty good spirits. Again, only eight miles in, so. Everybody should still be crushing it, but doing well. Nice cloud cover, so tiny little breeze. So 
feeling pretty good from the weather. Feeling pretty blessed about that so far. And, uh, here we go. Okay, got a little incline, so I'll put this away and go do some work. See these people all the way up there. That's where we're going. Yeah, feeling pretty good. A couple drops of rain. Didn't really start to rain, but a few drops. Just letting us know. Could happen anytime. Sky could open up. These guys in front of me said quite a bit cooler this year than last year. Last year up on top of this ridge, it's pretty hot. <laughs> Said this is when they <laughs> realized how hot the race was gonna be because of the sun, but we got a tiny little breeze, some good cloud cover. So, doing pretty good, feeling pretty good. Right? I'm super glad we're not getting Usually through here, it's a scorching. Yeah. You know, like the sun just beats down on you. Yeah, that's what these guys up here were saying. This is when they realized how hot this race was going to be. <laughs> so you did two years ago. Yeah. How, how'd you do? Tell me about it. So, I try not to try to give a moment for what it's worth. You know what I'm saying? Like, I try not to live in the past. Yeah. The whole, the whole race, I just found my own groove. Yeah. And I remember coming into here scared as shit because you, know, you got like another 220 fucking miles. Yeah. So that scared me a bit. But um, I ended up doing pretty good. I went just over 70 hours and got second place. Nice, dude. But it came out of nowhere. You know, like it really, it all just. You know, I don't think I ever picked up the pace. I just stayed the same pace and it yeah. kept everyone slowed down. Yeah. Well, if you finished in second place, that tells me I'm going too fast probably nope. right now. No? Nope. You're going exactly the pace you're supposed to go. All right. That's the thing too that I try to keep in my mind is nothing Nothing, everything happens how it's supposed to happen. You know, nothing is, we might not plan it, but it's still, that's how it's supposed to happen. Yeah. Like you're never late into an aid station. You're never early. You get there right on time. Right. Yeah. Normal people don't do this. Yeah. So I think we've learned, you know, one of the things I, one of my biggest mantras in this is, it teaches you how to suffer well. Yeah. We all suffer. Some just do it better than others. And the ones who learn how to suffer well, I think are the ones that, that do the best, not just in running, but in life. Oh, I agree. Yeah, the amount of similarities to running and life is unreal. So yesterday when I was kind of getting ready to, to drive out here, I, uh, I was just getting ready and this thought popped in my mind that your goals define your obstacles. And what I mean by that is, like, if you're out to do a little 10 mile run, the little obstacles that get in your way, they, yeah. they become big. Sometimes like, getting out the door. Sometimes yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, or so, you go the speed you wanted. Yeah, you have a little blister on your toe. But the bigger your goal, the, the you have to focus on the bigger obstacles and those little obstacles that seemed big before just kind of take care of themselves. Yeah. Like, so you want to stop worrying about those little little obstacles. Bite off something make, bigger. Make your goals bigger. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, if you're worried about small stuff, you got to just dream bigger. Yeah, that's it. When you take even this, right? I mean, stressing over 240, 
if we were doing a thousand, this right. would be like home stretch, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're smelling the barn with 200 miles ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It didn't even feel like a hundred miles times two, right? It was, it's so like, so different. Yeah. Like you get to the point where like any, like you could feel like you're completely sucking and you're just walking, but you're doing great. Yeah, you know? yeah. You're yeah. into a little bit of a mist. Like I said before, it was just a few raindrops, but I didn't kind of feel it in the air. A little misty, but look where we're at, we're on top of the slick box, it's beautiful. Wait till we get around this corner here. We're gonna see, it's pretty fantastic. Hopefully the camera can pick this up. <laughs> We're out in the middle of pretty much nowhere. Feeling pretty good. Outside of the left ankle, got a little kink in it, kind of rolled it a little bit, not much, but and then right knee kind of barking at me every once in a while, nothing major. And then the big thing that I need to start to adjust when I get to Amasa aid station about another five miles, is I got my big toe on my right foot's kind of rubbing against the shoe. And uh, got a little callus there. Typically doesn't bother me, but for today, today for some reason, it's kind of, rubbing a little bit. So obviously I don't want to get a blister under that callus. That'd be pretty painful. So I'm gonna have to do a sock change, tie the shoes a little tighter in the toe box so that the toes aren't moving around quite so much, but leave enough in the ankle uh, area with the heel lock tie so that uh, it's not pressing against those tendons in the ankle. So starting to hit some some of that dirt sand fine fine powder kind of stuff yeah feeling pretty good feeling really blessed about the weather the weather right now is pretty much perfect yeah a little cloud cover a little of that moisture in the air so feeling good kind of in a pocket all by myself right now. Not too many people around. Some people up ahead of me not too far. But it's kind of nice to be out here by myself. Just me and you. Like 12, 12 miles in. Is that like 5%? 5% of the race. Already checked off. Nice. Okay. Had fun with you guys. But gotta go. Got stuff to do. Alright. We just came down that. Probably didn't look that super, super steep. And then this coming down here. And look at there. Nice little cop right up. Looking good. Looking good. We're about 13.9 miles. Rain's been a little bit more consistent now. Still just nice drops. Actually, uh, more of a benefit than a hindrance. So that's good, loving that. 
Look at that, that's so beautiful. Wow. And if you're watching this at home, and you've never been to Moab, and this has to be on your list of places to go. It is beautiful. Feeling good. And I know, like I said, it's only 14 miles in. So, got a whole long way for the train to derail, but right now, everything's running on track. So, just gotta keep that up. Just gotta keep it going. Gotta figure out where this trail goes, actually. <laughs> I think we're gonna go this way. We're gonna go right over here. Yeah! So I see these white marks here. That's not necessarily just for the race. There's white marks down there. These are for the Jeep trails that are out here. The Razor trails. And that black mark, that's all rubber from the tires. So, yeah, man, I'm doing good. Better quit playing. Go do some work. I do appreciate you guys hanging out with me. It's been fun having you tag along. Ooh. Here we go, we gotta go back this way. Huh? Look at this. Ooh. And it's slick rock and it's wet. And it's steep. And watch them feet. We've made it to the Amasa Back Aid Station. Thank you. 36 in. All right. You need a drop bag, they're right there. Yeah, okay. All right, thank you. Good job, runner. Thank you. Uh, yeah, let me throw this down. Can you just fill this up with water? Sure. And then I'm gonna chug it, so you don't need to put a lid on it, and then I'll fill it up with tailwind again. Do you need a cup of water? Yeah. yeah. I don't know what it's like standing out here in this rain, but running in is perfect. <laughs> Glad, okay. you, glad you're having fun. It's great, man. This weather is just perfect. It's not hot, like us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, God, just smiling on you. Can we just top that off real quick again, one more time? And then I'm gonna do tailwind in the other. Do you know how they're cutting the tailwind? Is it? <laughs> it's uh, pretty strong. Okay, good. Training, yeah. good. It is good in fact it's probably it, it, there's probably more powder in it than there should be right now we're good because we need what to have it need? um yeah buddy i think Ooh. i don't know if it's on or not i think it is uh, <laughs> how about uh for my bladder should i fill my bladder here or at the next one 15 so it depends on how full your bladder is i haven't there's nothing in it oh yeah let's fill it okay. miles for the next one. all right let's, what do you got in this one let's do tailwind in here Tailwind. All right. And you want water in the bladder? Yeah. All right, I don't know where the crew is, but I'm going to put on my rain jacket and get out of here. All right. Here's the Amasa back aid station. Raining pretty good now. It's coming down, so never did see crew. So I don't know what the mix-up was, but... They're gonna miss out on an epic story because 
Pretty great trail running right now. Pretty great. Rain changes it up, makes it different. But I'm gonna kind of take this off. I'll show you a little bit. It's me right here. Got my rain jacket on, got my hood on. Making time. I was gonna fill this up, but they didn't have any uh anything hot. So no cheese quesadilla, uh no gluten-free tortilla, so we're just out. 17 miles to the next one. So we're out. Alright, here we go. I'm gonna go across that bridge over there. My crew arrived at a massive back but I had already left the aid station and headed back out onto the trail and into the rain. things didn't come together the way that we wanted them to. However, my crew made the best of the time that they were there at the aid station when they got there just after I had left. And they met up with Ed Jones, who is the father of Stephen Jones, who this race is dedicated to. What's, what's my name is Ed Jones. Mm -hmm. My call sign is N7RTG. I'm the director of communications for the Moab 240. And I'm also the father of Stephen Jones, the person who the race was named after. Uh, Stephen was an avid 100-miler, uh, 200-mile runner, and uh, became good friends with Candace and uh, tried to convince Candace to have a race in Moab. And he laid it out. Uh, and the, the, race, the present course is, is about 85% of what Stephen laid out, uh, but Candace was really too busy with uh, two 200 mile class uh, races going on, and she says, I just don't have time to do another one, and he pleaded with her, he says, everyone knows about Moab, it's a beautiful place, and uh, I personally used to travel internationally, and I'd go to another country and, and ask where I was from, and I figured they didn't know where Provo, Utah was, so I'd say Salt Lake City. And uh, they'd say, Salt Lake City, is that near Moab? And uh, anyway, it's, it's well known. Wow. So Stephen was uh, tragically killed in an avalanche backcountry skiing in 20, 2016. And uh, Candace decided to go ahead and organize this race and, uh, as a memorial to Stephen. So that's why it's called the Moab 240, Stephen Jones Memorial. Absolutely. And what do you see this uh, in the future? What would, what would Stephen want uh, at, after this? I am sure he is, he is really pleased with what's happened. Um, the first race, the first Moab 240 was in 2017. And uh, there was only like 125 runners. And I thought, this ain't gonna last. This, this is not gonna fly. Uh, but then the next year they got more and uh, two years ago it sold out like within the first hour and uh, this year's uh, Moab 240 sold out 30 minutes after opening. So it's, it's become a real success. And a wait list and everything. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So selling out in, in uh, 30 minutes and then there was like 50 on the wait list and then they, they sh turned off the wait list. Mm -hmm. So we're really happy with what's happened. Absolutely. And wow. I, and I know Stephen's happy about it. I, I love doing this event. I love, I, I'm not a sports fan. I really, not, I'm not into sports. But I love doing the, the, uh, the, the ultra racing because 
the people are competing against the clock. They're not, they're not trying to put down their, the other runners. Your opponent is not, it's a brotherhood or a sisterhood that the runners are trying to help each other. One of them starts to lag, they, they encourage the other one, come on, let's do it, you know, we're gonna finish this together. And I just love that spirit that, uh, like I said, well, like in football or, you know, you're trying to kill your, your opponent, but, but uh, ultra running is not that way. And I love seeing the, the runners and what great people, just wonderful personalities and good character. And, and I'm just excited to do this. We've left the Massabac aid station at 17.8 and we're on our way to base camp at 32.8 miles. Got my bladder filled up, that's nice. So I got a little extra water. Ooh. I don't want too fun. <laughs> a little fun. Seventeen point nine miles. Cruising along. Going up this steep thing. We came from all the way down there. There was a aid station. Been a little bit of a steep climb. Coming up here. Uh, Rain's still raining just a little bit, but nothing like it was at the aid station. That was pretty crazy. Came through, cooled down. Put on my rain jacket. Of course now, yeah, about a mile out of the aid station or whatever. It's not raining to the point where you need it, but to put it in the pack, stop, take your pack off, put it in the pack, put the pack back on. And it's still kind of drizzling, so. I'm not too super hot yet. It's too, too super hot. Whatever. So I uh, leave it on for a few more minutes. See, see how I do. But uh, yeah, plugging along, plugging along. That's pretty. Still need to figure out that foot issue with the rain and not having the crew there. I decided not to take my shoes off, try to fix that on my own. The last thing I want to do is get mud inside my shoe, I'm trying to play around with that. So hopefully at the next aid station, it'll be a little more dry. I think they said it's 15 or 17 miles to the next one. And then, uh, and then it's a long, hot, dry stretch after that. So, uh, you make sure I fill my extra water bottles. Given my choice between the rain and the heat, I'll take rain all day long, so this kind of rain. We'll see later how we do. It's supposed to start getting a little heavier this afternoon, so I may change my mind, but right now it's pretty good running weather. Alright, I'm out. 
We made it to Jackson's, also known as Jacob's Ladder, and this was a great part of the course. It was really technical, the rain made the rocks a little slick, so it was a little bit of a difficult section, but it was one of my favorites. All right, so we're about 22.6 miles in. I think this is the section that they call Jacob's Ladder. Uh, it's not really raining too much, it's kind of spitting, but the rocks are still real wet and sandy, so real slick. So I'm gonna show you guys here <laughs> what we gotta be real careful about, because we don't wanna uh, take any wrong steps, which right here could definitely be a wrong step. Come on here. It's definitely not a section that you're probably gonna run too much even though it's a nice downhill sometimes the downhills aren't necessarily that easy so yeah Got guys down there all the way down there ran with some of them this morning but I don't know if they got out of the aid station faster than me or they just pushing a little faster pace. But... <laughs> Hold on, I might need to use my poles here for this section here. No, no. We're good. So I think from other research I've done, without the water on the rocks, this is about a seven minute downhill with the water on the rocks. Probably gonna take us a little bit longer. How you doing back there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, some ladder. You need to show somebody how to build ladders, right? I guess it's better to go down this than up it. Yeah. Whew. Yeah, the water definitely makes it a little bit more interesting because the water and the sand have kind of mixed to make it a little slick. Oh, and just kind of tweak the knee a little bit. That was kind of fun. Looks like down there we got a little bit of a one of the sheriff, park ranger, some kind of authority figure down there. Probably waiting to make sure everybody makes it down off this okay. I think we gotta go. There's the car over there, so. <clears throat> you pay attention in all these stacked rocks. There's other little stacked rocks like that that kind of help us figure out the course on top of the ribbons. Good one right there, I think. Ah. Oh boy. Oh, there we go. See, there's another one of them carn stacked. So that's why when people make those on the trail just for fun or for art, it kind of screws people up from finding an actual trail. So that's they do actually serve a purpose. Oh, crap. That kind of hurt. <laughs> so, so far we come from up there. Gotta go all the way back down there. Here's our little confidence ribbon here. Confidence marker. Turns again. 
think I might have tore my shoe just a second ago. Well, I'm not making up any time right now. That's for sure. But All right, we're gonna go this way over here, I think. There's the car again. I think we went that go that way, I think. Yeah, there's the river. <laughs> oh hey, look there, a little bit of a Almost flat. Yeah. Oh, almost done. Almost down here. How about that? Yeah, these are some ankle twisters right here, though, for sure. These little rocks, if they give way. Wet the rock could give way or the foot could slide off the rock. So just take it slow. We've got a long way, long way to go, a lot of hours yet. We're about six hours and six minutes in so far. That's why I can still talk a little bit. <laughs> Asked me at about mile 95 or mile 100. Ask me a question, see how much, how many words I use for my answers there. All right, see there's that car down there. I don't see any ribbons, but I see the car. We're gonna go this way. This way? Doesn't matter which. All right, that was a good choice for him to go back. Yeah, it sounded like pretty good. Yeah, he was hurting. Yeah. Hey, I appreciate. Yeah, right. Talking about rolling. I appreciate I you being out here. Right here. It's pretty slick coming down that. I've heard that it's pretty slick. Yeah. It's getting worse, I think. Yeah. 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 All right. Seemed like a good spot to watch for yeah. a bit. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I appreciate you being out here. Hey, Thank you. All right. We made it. It only took us, what is that? 12 minutes, 50 seconds. All right, so we're 24.3 miles in. So 10% of the way, check that box. So, I, uh, running with somebody here, so what's your name? Todd. Todd. What's your bib number? 57. All right. Where are you from, Todd? Napa, California. Napa, California. And what brought you out here? I'll try this 240 out. Yeah. Since I said 100 is the new 200, 240 is the new 200. Yeah. So right. really, we're only doing like a marathon? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Because everybody does this now. Yeah. yeah. Good work, bud. Good work, man. <laughs> Keep it going. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. There's Justin Wright. Yep. Still working good. Yeah. So you done hundreds before? I did a couple down the uh, horns of run. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's more of a party. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. It's so casual. Yeah. You don't yeah. even feel like you're, you're competing. Yeah. Very, very friendly. Yeah. This is your first 200? This will be my first 200. Nice. And what's the goal today? Under 112. Yeah, that's it. That's the goal. Yeah. 
Good job. That's his icing on the cake. Yeah. All right, well, good work. Let's, let's get it moving, yeah. We've left base camp and we are on our way to Oasis. Oasis is at 59.3 miles. We're about 33.15 miles in and uh, back on the side of Colorado over here. Lots of rain and mud, clouds, storm moving in again. Rain comes down and it lets up and it comes down. But still moving pretty good. Not bad. Not great. Got the left ankle kind of being a little ornery. Comes and goes. So. Right through it. Stopped at the aid station. I think it was called Base Camp on 31. Had a big plate of egg and potatoes and cheese and a gluten-free grilled cheese and then they gave me some uh, lentils and rice to go so pretty set on calories for a little bit i'd actually eat too much next actual aid station was like 25 miles so there's a little water stop just to water jugs on the side of the trail around four miles out after that, another 20 to, to an actual aid, so thought it was better to eat than not. Okay, we're 37.75 miles in, and uh, everything's going pretty good, except for right under the balls of my feet on both feet. Feels like I'm walking on a rock with a bone sticking down or something. Everything else is kind of cleared up, and. That's kind of the issue now, so I have to uh, see when I get to the aid station if we can do a little footwork, some stretches on it. But check this out. I get a little blue sky and a little bit over there but up here it's still pretty cloudy which is really nice last year a lot of people wound up having to drop on this section because it was so hot you kind of get in this little canyon and heat's reflecting off the walls so yeah so a lot of people struggled so yeah, everybody's welcome in this cooler weather Real nice. Been out here ten hours and thirty-eight minutes so far. Got a few hours left. back here. Still rocking and rolling. Just it in there. Yeah. 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 Oh, 
basically 11 hours in. Started at 6, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Another hour or two probably of uh, sunlight. And then the race will get interesting. Hey everybody. So we've been out here for 13 hours, 27 minutes, which means it is, what time is that? <laughs> Can't do the math now. Seven, 7.28, something like that. I don't know. It's gotta be right, right? 13 plus. Yeah, the brain fog's already starting to set in. Uh, yeah, 13.28. And uh, seven, it's seven twenty-eight. So, but we have been out here for uh, forty-eight point six miles, which means we are over twenty percent done. So we can check that box off too. Just checking these boxes, baby, checking the boxes. 20%, 20% in 13 hours and some change. So do the math on what that adds up to. If I could keep that pace going, I would love it. Don't count on it, it's not gonna happen. But it was a good first day, it's getting dark now. Got my headlamp on. Uh, had a nice run stretch there for a few miles and uh, passed quite a few people. Now I'm going to kind of take it easy a little bit, let those legs rest again. And uh, so some of this trail is kind of hard to find now that it's dark, so I got to kind of just follow the headlights that are up in front of me. But anyway, it's. Uh, that's me, still kicking. Here we are at the Oasis aid station. We've made it, but it's dark. We're looking for hot food, and then we're off. Woo! Thank you, guys. Thank you for having us. Thank you. 36. 121? 36 in. Welcome. Howdy, howdy. What do you guys got for hot food? We left the Oasis Aid Station and we're on our way to Indian Creek. My feet were a mess. I had felt like I had bones coming through the bottom of the balls of my feet. I had blisters on the side of my heel for about the last 15 miles. My left ankle tendons were inflamed. My shoulders felt like they were on fire from the heavy wet pack. And I knew I'd feel better once I saw my crew. Randy's going to be pacing me, and so they made sure that he had all of the same mandatory gear that the runners were required to wear as they headed out onto the course. Yeah, I got a jacket. This is the one. I got a second jacket. Okay. Yeah, I got a hood on, so. Okay. I got more layers and another layer shirt too, so. Yeah. Okay, cool. So just, yeah, we just gotta make sure you have all that stuff so you can be safe when you leave here with them. Oh, yeah. And then I'll take care of you. Okay? All right. Cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. Are you guys get you out of here? I'm ready to get out. <laughs> I know, you're getting restless now? So, okay. I've been restless. So gotta go. Yeah, and, and then he'll come in. Is it he? Yeah, all exhausted. <laughs> He'll be like, I'm slow down, fool. Absolutely. Oh, he's, been moving so, he's been moving fast. That's cool. That's great. Yeah. We gotta go now. You should be coming to you in about 45 
five minutes. Maybe sooner. He's been moving at 16 minutes per mile pace, which is for him right now two hours ahead of schedule. So we'll see exactly when he's gonna come in, but he's definitely been moving. So far, what is what has he gone through? So far, he's gone through some pretty bad weather. I would say from the start, we dropped him off at six o'clock in the morning. He's endured several rainstorms. I'd say it's rained probably 30% of the day. Uh, rained right out of the gate pretty much for the first several hours. Um, around eight o'clock at night, once it got cool, they picked up about a 45 minute rain where it was just a consistent downpour. So he's he's fighting the elements for sure. Right now it seems like it's a cool temp, but if he's been wet and he's been out there, you know, and he doesn't have the proper gear, which this is his heavy jacket. So he could be out there just with a thin layer and a base layer. And if that's wet, then it could be problematic for him. I'm sure he's been, he's been fighting for every square inch of real estate he's getting out here. So he's a he's a soldier. He's a beast. Sure. He's a beast. <laughs> he's a beast. Yeah, you kind of Tony! Who that is? Hey hey! It's over. What's up? How's buddy? it going, man? And we must be getting close in. <laughs> oh, I don't want to say close because that's all perspective. Oh man. Because the finish line is almost close too. So. Yeah, hey, it is almost close. <laughs> How do you feel? Good. Yeah? This is my new buddy, but I don't know his name. I'm Alex. Alex. Oh, shit. Look at this, man. Oh, I'm happy to see you guys. Me too. Woo! Yeah. We've been waiting for you. Hey, Albert, I don't know what you're doing, buddy, but I, I feel like I got a little, not a full second wind, but at least wind blowing me this way. Yeah. Carrying some weird stuff with that camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a weird wind. Yeah, we just we both been going through a little bit of a dark time here. We got some stuff that we gotta yeah, get guy, taken so care of. Yeah. So he's got IT band issues. I got a blister on my heel. Okay. My shoulders are just on fire from the weight of the pack, plus all the rain, so they're kind of ripped raw a little bit. Yeah. Blessing and a curse is the rain. Yeah, well, I would, I mean, I, I I couldn't imagine going through that with what you guys went through last year with this. Oh, the heat is just nuts. Back this way. Over here. Right over here. Come follow me, gentlemen. So we got some cheer. I got some Cheerios. I mean, not Cheerios. Cheetos for you. Cheetos, nice. You hungry? Yeah, but I mean, I need to I need to see what kind of hot food they have, mm -hmm. and then we weren't planning on it, but we are planning on it now. We're gonna, I'm gonna, I need to reset because it got tough. I know Randy will be with me, but I gotta fix this ankle and his feet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, Randy's waiting. Randy's waiting for you. Mm -hmm. Am I am I early or late? You are early. You are kicking ass. Good. I wish I could tell what, what place I was in. Not because I care about what place I'm in, but more just in my front third, middle third, or back third, just so I know how to manage the race here. Yeah, but you are whooping some ass. Nice. I'm getting my ass whooped too at the same time, so nah. it's a, nah, it's a bloody battle it. here. Don't speak it. Welcome. 36. Nice 36 in. Awesome. Appreciate you. Yeah, Alex! Tony! Yeah. Brandon! Tony, you what's up, brother? Good job! Good job! Good job! Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Let's go, let's go. Let's, let's go. Right here, right here, right here. Let you sit down real quick. Hold on, right. buddy. I gotta take this. Is this where we're at? Yeah, this is where we're at. Alright, I need yeah. new shoes, new socks, I need a back rub. I need blister care. Alright. I need to probably see the medic. You need to see a medic? I need them to help me with that with the foot. You gotta go to them, brother. Where are they at? Right over here. Why don't why don't you uh I'll bring some shoes over to you? What do you what do you I need? want it uh, uh 
Just See, leave that there. Let me get the. Let me do the blister. Well, what do you need? Yeah, yeah. I want. I want uh, the, the socks, not these, but just the, the uh, like regular the socks. socks. Got it. Um, and then and I shoes? want shoes. Yeah. Okay. So that when they take care of this, I can put those on. And then I'm going to eat. Yeah. So they got quesadillas. Uh, they've also got lentil soup. They've got mashed potatoes. It's like the race car tire. Okay. Let's see about the lentil soup. They have vegetable soup that they put lentils in. I don't think the vegetable soup is gluten free. But I need to have, I need to, I need, I need calories. I didn't. Okay. You didn't I did the last 15 miles just, oh, okay. just tailwind. Okay. All right, got you. you Let me get you some. Uh, okay. Some mashed potatoes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. medics right there yeah. in that tent. <laughs> I gotta go in there. Um, no, I'm gonna keep going, but I might be a little bit just changing my feet. Okay. Okay. What do you need? Where's I need your feet? I need some foot uh, stuff. I need to. I, I got something stuff. going on with, with yeah. bone yeah. With and you, uh, and a blister. Okay. Have you been there? Um. Um. Yeah, they're right here. Let me get you some food. Get them in a chair with your socks. I feel like I'm just someone will come over and be able to see you. Moving like a shit show, like nothing. Got unpacked clothes. Wherever you want me, I don't care. Thank you so much. Yeah, I know. I'm on the side of my heel, but also, like right here on the on the ball of my foot, I feel like there's like a bone popping out on both feet. So I don't know if it's just on the sides, but and I got crew that can like rub my feet. Yeah, you got to put me in here. Just when you see that, I'll walk through. How's it going? Good. Number 23? Number 23. Yeah, big ziplock bag. Big ziplock bag. Here you go. Thanks, sir. Yeah. We should have bring it back if you want it more screen. Well, yeah, I'm not carrying it. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm definitely taking it. Uh, I'm good. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's it. Right. How's it going, Phil? Huh? How's it going? Oh, it's going good. Thank it's you. not horrible. I just don't want it to get worse. Do you need any water? Where, what areas um, are hurting? Yeah, I need to... Uh, um, it's, it's, the, yeah, the cal that's not really too bad. It's this and then right, right here. Under both, it feels like there's a bone pop down. Thank you. And I think that toenail got messed up that bear. What got messed up? That toenail, that bear, this one. And I think because of the way the foot was, I think I was kind of raising that toe and hitting it again. Kind of down this. It's sore. Yeah, but. What's my shoulder? <laughs> I know. My, my shoulders actually. I've never had. I mean, I've. My shoulders. Is it both so shoulders or just one? Both. No, it's, both. Like, I mean, like, I, I carry like a total of my shoulders. Okay. And I've, I've run with that pack. We, I did rim to rim to rim with it, loaded up, then the fast pack. And I think it was just the rain kind of made it rub a little bit. And so I kept adjusting it. And I think it's just the weight. You're right. I think the, the weight of it just kind of uh, no, just, just weighed it down. Yes, I would like to finish. I think we should pop this one. Yeah, I'd like to I pop it. I think we it. should tape that. Just, um, okay. Yeah. Uh, this Do this one here? Is that what you're talking no, about? No, I think we should pop this and tape uh -huh. it, and I think we should tape right here. Yeah, okay. And it's on both feet right there. It is, okay. Yeah. I volunteered a pig foot for five days. Yeah. yeah. What's it cause from? I've had it Slip most of the day, yeah. How you doing out there, man? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. You were fucking cruising. And then yeah. the last, the last, uh, you, well, I your slowed head way is down. Yeah, the last, the last hour and a half or so. Yeah. It seemed like, but yeah, I went to a dark place. Yeah, Night, but though. well, as long as I, as long as you keep moving, it always gets better. Yep. But and you haven't been taking as many calories, right? No, I, I yeah, say. yeah. So, so I, I'm gonna yeah, so eat, I'm gonna drink. Yeah, next I'm gonna keep moving with the food too. Also, do you have a, a coffee or something? You're gonna get to start like you're gonna shake. I don't know if it's up or not, but oh no, no it's up. I'm not cold at all. Okay. So I get, I get a little. Because it might get that way, I know. Yeah. Lentil soup, right there. Did Gluten you check? Free. Okay. Yeah. Do you want it? Yeah. Well, I'll put this, uh, put this right here. Mm -hmm. All right, blue shoes? Yes, sir. All right.
See that blister? Hey, you're back. I'm going to take a picture. <laughs> this is by far not the worst. I had Bigfoot, there was a lady. Okay, come on. I called it a kitty litter box. Her entire big toe, the side of it was a blister that blew out and filled oh. with sand. Oh, man. We had to get a huge syringe and fill it with saline and yeah. inject it in there to try to get it to melt. I mean, to try to get it to melt. Yeah, I've had that for. I had it. What's the last aid station up there? Well, whatever it is, I had it Did they, ten miles before that. No, they were busy, and I'm like, I thought I had a drop back there, and I didn't. And so I'm like, I just need to get down here. I had a couple of kids that he is, it wasn't enough. Well, the thing is good, even though you know you're low, you don't look like you're a good Nah. No, I'm okay. I'm just not no. perform. I'm not at top performance because you know yeah. we got to fuel the machine. Did you get there 100 past me? You did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did a pretty good time. <laughs> so I'll see you at 160. Okay. Friends and I will be volunteering there also. We'll be able to check how this is going. But you'll have some easy issues in between. They can yeah. make any adjustments of any way. Hey, man, you're cold. Yeah, it's starting to get a little cold, but it might, I don't want to take my puffy out of that and then... Well, I got your puffy over there. Do you feel like it's too Oh, you... Uh, yeah, go give me one of them other jackets. Do you watch Big Puffy? You should put some... Here's my expert yeah. advice. Put something warm on because you know what you're going to do sitting here getting cold? Use energy. Yeah. That you don't have enough of because you haven't eaten in yeah. two miles. Go get that big green one. Yeah. That's the one I'm going to use for Monday if we wind up getting snow. Same thing down okay. here. Yes, ma'am. Nothing else anywhere. No. I don't see a blister on the side or anything. No. Mm. When are you going to sleep? Okay. I mean, it's I'm kinda, not saying you need to now. I'm just asking because I. Well, coming in here, I was kind of thinking about it, but seeing these guys and getting a little food, I kind of re energized a little bit. So. Yeah. I, my own, the reason I ask is when you decide to sleep. Mm -hmm. I want you to take your socks and shoes off and like feed her out while you're sleeping. Whether it's in the car or the sleep station. Yeah. You have a couple spots that are like pretty moist. Yeah. And they're fine right now. But change your socks frequently, like whenever. I would change your socks at these stations and then whenever you choose to sleep, if it's not a trail now, take your socks and shoes off like feed her out. Yeah. I have a, a pair of socks in every drop bag now. Good. What's your name? Jenny. Jenny, I appreciate you. Oh, thanks. Some chairs are in higher demand than others. Thank you. The one is not, no way near the fire, so it's yeah. no, and not demand at all. So are you running the runnable? Can I help You're you hiking? with some? At this point, I was just keeping moving that last uh, 10 with no gas. Here. The right. 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 Mm -hmm. toes. I thought I could ignore. Just Anything else? Just I'm a friend. Friend. My new friend. Yeah. Yeah. Colorado. You yeah. are a lifesaver. Yeah. I think it's going to help, I hope. Pop it or just take it? The thugs at the next state station station, have them look at it, but... Oh, I do have one more thing. That gator was rubbing right here. Just... Do you want to go in this? I took it off, I don't know, 20 miles ago, but that one I left on because it was still keeping stuff out. Yeah. Did you have it over the top of your compression? Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. I'm just trying to think of why that wouldn't bother you on that. Well, so what happened rainfall? was this this sock fell down and it okay. created a bunch and I didn't know, you, know, didn't you know. know. Yeah, I mean, either. You know how it is. I mean, when you're out there, you're just... Yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather not have that. Yeah, you don't need that, too. Okay, I know I've already said this, but really thank you so much. I appreciate you. You're welcome. I'll see you at 160. Okay. I don't feel anything. So what are you going to tell your future self? 
Way to hang tough. And uh, get get to the finish. It wasn't that You know, the sun will come up. You get a rebirth when the sun comes up. Just keep moving. And uh yeah, I, that's about that's about all the energy I'll have to tell myself at this point. You uh, you you doing good on the ups, good on the downs? Or you, yeah, you know? but I ran, I ran part of it. And Phil over there said he was just gonna power hike it, and he's caught up to me, so okay, that makes me. Okay, great, thanks. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't. I, hey, and those are the right sides. Okay. You're doing, you're doing your race, buddy. There's two more coming. They said. You're this welcome. is your, this is your race. All right, you know, do your thing. So you're in a, more? Good stuff. No, that's great. I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna eat two of those and I'm gonna take two to go. Okay. So we're at 945 right now. I probably was about a four minute delay. I'm putting that clock on. You're about 13 minutes here. Yeah, but I'm okay. I, 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 would, I, I would needed I, yeah, I wouldn't be worried too worried about that though. No, I needed to be in here. This was and it got dark for me. Did it? God damn, brother. Damn it. Headache. I saw you do the whole hundred last week and didn't get that dark for you. Uh -uh. It's dark no, I was just got at mile 66. I was like, I'm, I'm in worse shape than I was at the finish up there. At mile 66. 66. Oh, it was just, it was just a dark spot. You know, they yeah, come and yeah. go. Yeah. I'm gonna have several more, I'm sure. We've got to manage over. Manage those cycles. Manage those cycles. Pumped up. This goes inside of you. Smell that. Woo! God damn. Smell that. Smells like a winner right there. That's a winner, uh, buddy. All right, I'm gonna roll out. Are you sure? What about, yeah, bro. what about, what about, what about uh, what? Another layer? For what? Fucking cold. Is it? I mean, maybe if you're just standing around, <laughs> sitting by the fire, enjoying life. <laughs> right. Now <laughs> you're out there moving. Sick. You know what, why don't you sit here and start on that piece of beer real quick. No, no, I'm gonna eat on eat and go. Those are coming with me. Okay. Let me grab that bag. I appreciate you. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. What, are we, yeah. what time are we at? Uh, so we were at that age. 219, I was planning on getting here at 245, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so I'm you're 25 good. minutes ahead of schedule. Yeah, but. Yeah, you got plenty, you got plenty of time yeah. in your belt right now, so you've got some construction. Yeah, at this point, it's going to be a nice little hike through the dark until the sun comes up and then it'll do it'll something. Okay. How are you doing? I'm so glad to see you, man. It got dark for me. Did you, go, did you want to lift? Did you want the trolley down? Uh, do you have it? Yeah, it's in the bucket. He's landing up there. Yeah. Go, just go get in and catch up. I'm just walking. Good work. Good job, you too. Good job. Good work. All right, to the left. Turn left. To the left. 
These guys just stand in there all night telling people to turn up. <laughs> well, yeah, otherwise they go back to the start. All right, yeah, yeah. Well, I appreciate you for being out here. Thanks for not making or letting me go to the start. Yeah. Tony, you're a your beast. So that remains to be seen. We'll know on Monday or Tuesday. Well, you stay humble throughout the whole time. What keeps you like that? Man, that, the, the little secret is gratitude and just keeps you burst. Like, I mean, these people are out here serving me and uh, serving us. And you just gotta, I mean, it just makes you feel good to help other runners out. I gave a guy a couple of my gels because he was out of food and it's just like, it's a pick me up. Like we're all in this together. And then these guys are out here. I couldn't be doing it without these guys. These, these people out here at the aid stations. And, you know, the medical team that just fixed up my feet. Like they don't have to be out here. I make a huge difference. So, you know, that gratitude is just making you feel good to tell people that you, they, it's sincere. You, you appreciate them. And it's like, gives you a burst. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so Albert, what do you what do you think about this crazy uh I mean, you've been hanging out with all these trail runners for for today. What's they what do you think about this place? These people, these weirdos, these things. They're all crazy. willing to pay it forward. That's what I've seen so far. Yeah. No one's out here to we gotta go this way, is that what we're yeah. doing? Yeah, Randy, if you're here. Randy, we're over here now. Yep, I'll lock it up, don't worry. And how you guys continue to push yourselves and we're looking at the spot tracker and thinking, no way. Like every every so my every so every time we look at it, we're like, dude, you're killing it. <laughs> it's so funny because there's there was about 20 of us just kept passing each other back and forth. <laughs> like somebody have a good, you know, mile or two uh -huh. and they just burn it up. And then, and then later they'd be like, yeah, I had a burst, I used it. <laughs> and then, you know, he'd be like, I did that too. I was like, I was doing 12 and a half, 13 minute miles for, I don't know, three miles, four miles. So Tony. Good stretch. So for the first 60, 65 miles, 63 yeah. miles. Yeah. You're at a 16 minute per mile pace. Yeah, that's good. That's a that's a fast pace. That's a great pace. Well, you just grow through what you go through. Yep. Got nothing to it but to do it. Yep. <laughs> How's Randy? Good. Yeah. He's been doing good. So go easy on him, Tony. <laughs> he only had a couple hours of sleep tonight. Well, better good. than hell. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, that might, yeah, that might be. No. You can put it on. You can slide it over you. Huh? There, oh, yeah, there's a place. Oh, but remember what... Uh... We made it to the island aid station at about 87 miles. My ankle was pretty inflamed. We tried to ice it. But unfortunately, we didn't have enough time there at the aid station to really have the ice have much of an effect. All right. <sighs> ice didn't really help much. I didn't think it would. Too short of a period of time. Huh? Too short of a time. Well, I needed to get out of there. Yeah, you gotta get moving your cold. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna lose anything. It's just pain. In the next 180 miles. I think we were here a few couple weeks ago. Yeah. Got a little less Sun. distance to go, but. Yeah, a little less this time in the morning. But. I think we were at about the 80 mile mark ish. For what? The bear. Yeah, but for 80 miles for what? Sunrise? Or what? Yeah, we were in the sunrise. Yeah. We were in the 80 mile mark. Yeah. Here we are. 
in a whole different environment. Look at this. Three hundred and sixty degrees of freaking beauty. Three hundred and sixty degrees. Did you ever get out? <laughs> That's why you bring a salon so you can document what you don't see. Good morning. It is. October 9th, day two of Moab 240. Tony Klein is at a little over 87 miles into this. And we're just enjoying these beautiful views. Something not many people get to enjoy by foot. I hear the footsteps. A picturesque morning sunrise. Anything you want to say before we sign off for the morning? Enjoy the day. Enjoy the day. Living in the moment. <laughs> it's all we can do. It's all we have. I'm looking at the ridge over here. Look at the ridge. <laughs> Stop pointing the camera at me. <laughs> you said you wanted to get to bed and ugly. Yeah. Well, there might be a little ugly coming. Randy needed a bio break, so at this point I decided I would try to run and see how far out in front of him I could get before he was able to catch up. Take a dirt bath. You're gonna take this jacket off real quick. Yeah, I can imagine. It was nice to have it on. It helped me warm up. Coming out of that eight thing. Well, you can't stop running. I got the GoPro running, going. Yeah. <laughs> How much battery you got? I got two more. I gotta dig him out of the back. You can walk that. Good push.
face right at the moment. I ain't gonna tell you what it is, none of your business. <laughs> but it's warp speed. <laughs> warp speed. Warp speed, baby. Warp speed. Dude, it's red down here. But it doesn't really hurt down there. Oh, right here. <sighs> is it a burning sensation that you always have? No, it's like the tendons and stuff inside just every time it, it's like they're rubbing in there like there's no no grease all right that would have been a disaster that sock would have rolled down there <laughs> like i can't get that down there i got shoes on now Tempted to have, I'm gonna take a nap here. Yeah, I was supposed to lay down and take 20 minutes, but I put my feet up there to let the blood drain out of them. But I'd start to doze, and when I'd start to doze, my legs would jump. And when my legs would jump, they'd twitch, and then it'd send pain through the ankles there, and then it was just for hot like hot pain so so we're gonna move i gotta get some sleep at some point i'm making him get some way. sleep at some point well, i want to but every time this wasn't the place i guess no. and it was cold so i was shivering as soon as we started to pack everything up son's like oh i'm here did you say you wanted some warmth yeah <laughs> Oh, did you put your jacket on? I'd like to warm up to 80 degrees. Every step of the way, the leg continued to hurt. I had to continue to make adjustments to my shoe, my sock, so that it didn't rub on the ankle. It started swelling up to the point where the skin began to split open. What's that? It is. Slide down. Okay. Yes, After a quick five minute nap, we were back on the trail. A longer nap would have yielded much better results, but that's the time we took. The hallucinations are starting. I see a green army backpack and I had already seen a human skull. Oh yeah, it's a log. Okay. <laughs> I know what you see, but I see a log. About there on the edge? Yeah. Yeah, that's the log. Yeah, I wish we would have got that skull. I know. 
But that would have really looked like a skull. So that would have been cool. We're almost to Bridger Jack. Yeah, I mean, three miles from there. Our, uh, you want to take some time there and yeah. sleep a little bit? We need to take some time there and regroup a little bit. Good. That'd be smart. Then we start our 19 mile trek to Shea Mountain. Coming up on Bridger Jack. Is that what it is? Bridger Jack. Bridger Jack aid station. But the GPS, the X file, has said we're about 4,000 feet from it for about the last two miles. <laughs> At least in my head. So but I think we actually see it. So I have been having some hallucinations. It's been kind of fun, but Randy says he sees it too, so I'm hoping it's really there. I see some trucks, vehicles, something shiny over there. Uh. It's a little nice. It's been hot today. It's been hotter today than yesterday. Yesterday, a lot of rain, a lot of cloud cover, a lot of mist. So it was nice, except for everything was wet. Feet got pretty trashed from the from just being wet. But now it's just hot. So it's gonna be something. A little cloud cover is a nice little break. Please tell me to have a good medical team here. Hell yeah! We're coming. Watch out, we're coming in hot. <laughs> coming in hot, clear the land to the runway. Oh dang, that could have almost been funny. <laughs> what could have been funny? <laughs> I mean, almost, like maybe, but it for sure wasn't the way I did it. <laughs> Much of a I don't see. station, but I'm sleeping anyway. I'll lay down behind that. There's a tent over there. Right there. Oh, yeah, nice. 36 in. Got time. Right here, man. 36. I promise. That. It's me. How you doing? Good. You look familiar to me. I don't know. Maybe. My name's Alex. Alex, <laughs> you were you been at any of the other races recently? No, sir. All right. We checked out of Bridger Jack and we headed back out onto the trail. We checked out of uh, Bridger Jack, Jack Bridger. Bridger Jack. Bridger Jack. And uh, we went in there, we stayed there. I rested for one hour. So I won't say slept for an hour. I slept for probably half hour, 20 minutes. But I laid there with these blankets over my head on a pat, pad on the ground. <clears throat> Ate some food, worked with the medical team. They told me that while my ankle is swollen, um, they, they uh, think it's just from the fact that 
walking 200s, there's a lot more walking. And if you're uh, used to doing 100s where you are doing a lot more running, the, uh, the cadence, foot strike, stride, all that's so much different that your legs aren't used to it. And so uh, that plus the compression with where the sock was and then with the uh, gaiters from yesterday to keep the sand out, all just kind of combined to make it inflamed, but she checked it out and said that uh, right now it's just painful, it's not really damaged. So that's good, so we're just gonna keep on trucking on. I wish it wasn't as painful, but. Uh, pain's not real. Pain's not real. It's just something the brain uses in your imagination to change your behavior. Ain't gonna happen. All right, would you say we have like two and a half hours of sun left or something? About two and a half hours of sun <laughs> and a lot of walking. <laughs> I don't know if I'm done with the hallucinations yet. I thought there was a blanket on the ground right there and that, rock. that yellow thing is. It's like a drop bag. It does look like a drop bag. Just a bright yeah. yellow rock. <laughs> and we're loaded up with how much water? You got two liters, I have two liters. Well, I have three liters. I have three and a half liters because I have a two liter bladder. That's what I meant. Two liter bladders are full. Yeah. And then we have our our soft flask, which is another liter. So we have three liters of water going up 4,500 feet for 19 miles. Yep. So we'll probably use every bit of the water. It's still warm right now. And every bit of the daylight. And in some of the morning. <laughs> Woo! You want me to get that backdrop? Both lighten the load. We've got some running in us now. We had good food, a little bit of rest. I know I'm only at 50K right now. He's over 100. But this is moving a lot better than we have been all day. Struggling to get up this far. <laughs> He's moving really good now. <laughs> Kind of uncharted territory. That's uncharted. The, yeah, that's the that's the thrill and the journey of uh, being out here in the wilderness. You know, it's about a little ten and thirty at night. Going to travel with Tony into a twenty-hour run, starting from ten thirty. Now we'll meet up with him in about an hour, and then we'll run through the night into the sunrise, all through the the morning and into the afternoon and I'll uh, I'll drop them back off with the other pacer Randy um, tomorrow night but as of where he's at right now uh, I know that it's been a rough go he he encountered a lot of weather issues yesterday um, when he started I mean it was pretty cold pretty rainy he um, I would say 30% of the day it was it was raining on him, and I think there's pros and cons to the to the rain and the weather like that because it's going to keep his temperature down. It's also going to make sure the fine dust on the track stays down and doesn't doesn't get kicked up and it's a nuisance in his shoes. So he might have saved himself a couple blisters or two with with it being a little bit more wet. But um, he did say we we met up with him at mile 72. And he did say that he was 
in a pretty dark spot from mile 60 to 72. Uh, he did bear 100 a week ago and he made the comparison that bear one at that at mile 60 of Moab was he was in worse shape than he was at mile 100 at bear. Um, so that's kind of telling of where he's at and what he's been gritting through and uh, that was last night so he's had a whole day um, basically a whole 24 hours of experiences that uh, we're gonna get caught up on here shortly but whatever it is whatever he's going through it's gritty it just takes a lot you ain't food we got food we got food we got food what kind of food we got burgers the usual burgers quesadillas I brought gluten-free Oreos Hot nice. Cheetos, regular Cheetos. Nice. I'm gonna need all that. I want out now. Yeah? <laughs> How are the feet? Feet are fine. This has been the most relentless climb I've ever been on. Really? Yes. Why is that? It is non stop. <laughs> it, it has been <laughs> brutal. It's super technical. Yes. And it puts you up. And then it drops you down. Now on this kind of road like this, for then it's just a steep, like four miles up. Yeah. And it pulls you all the way up. <coughs> In like, I don't know, 4,500 feet of vert and like <coughs> four miles or something. Not even four miles. Two miles because it puts you down and pulls you back up again. Damn. I don't know. I'm tired. I don't know. Talking about? Yeah. There's a lot of climb. Well, you look, you look like a million bucks, honey. What's uh, the secret? You gotta just keep going. There's no, no other option. No other keep option. Going to the, get to the aid station. Yeah, he, he needs sleep bad. So, uh, I need sleep. I slept one hour total since I've been with Randy once. Okay. For about 45 minutes, another time for maybe at that 10 ish. Okay. Uh, another one for like five, so probably not even an hour. Okay. By the time I lay down. Now, do you need any aid on your feet? You want to change yeah, out I, any? Socks. I'm going to have to go to medical, so my leg is super so, small. Shea Mountain was one of the most difficult parts of the course. It was cold, we made it to the road, and we started that climb up to the Shea Mountain aid station. We carried on to the aid station, and once I got there, I went straight to the medical tent. Do I get in a hurry to get to us? Yeah. We're moving fast at one point. You guys, yeah, at some point, you guys were kicking ass. Yeah. Yeah. That was before we got to that climb. Yeah. Back here. <laughs> Supposed to be two tenths of a mile or something to this aid station, I think, right? Yes. It's a few more steps. It's a few more steps. How helpful was Randy? Not any. Uh, Randy was great. Mm -hmm. He uh, took good care of me while I was out there. Make sure I sipped. Make sure I ate. Speaking of drinking, made sure I yeah, made sure I took a nap at that aid station, which really helped a ton. That's why we got so fast. Yeah, we came out of that nap, ate a bunch of good food, and laid down for that 45 minutes. So I keep going up and took off. But then we hit this a lot of steep. Rolly shit and technical stuff. Yeah. And that's been going on for a long time. Watch out for the color guard. Yeah. I'm over. Okay. Well, I'm just making sure. Uh, thank you. Any hallucinations? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I saw a rusted out old car. I saw a statue of the Virgin Mary or 
Oh my god, maybe this is tall, but it's wearing like a pink, I don't know, pink getup instead. Uh, saw orange, saw a skull. What else do we see? <laughs> a big face in the side of the cliff. Oh yeah. Well, all right, we're right here. Yeah, nice. Pacer. Yeah. Yeah. You're here. Follow me Alright, any? Alright, so out of the things I said, what would you like to eat? Alright, uh, I need to look at that soup. What kind of soup do they have? They have the lentil soup. Oh, yeah, that's kind of what I thought. Uh, Alright, I don't want I don't want that and I probably can't have the hardest one I've ever done. The, uh, oh man. Uh, Let's go for vegetable soup, right? He needs to go to yeah, medical. I need to go, I need to go straight to medical. Yeah. Medical's over here. Yeah. Um, 36. 36. Yeah, sorry, 36, Ann. Okay. All right, someone's gonna ha has someone reset your tracker? No, not yet. All right, you going to medical? Yes. All right, I'll be back to take care of it in a minute. Okay. 36. I'll come back to take care of it in a minute. Thank you. Down, buddy. A shred of uh, okay. hope. <sighs> What's up? Calm down, buddy. So uh, I ran the Bear 100 a couple weeks ago. Oh no! And uh, I wound up getting the pitting edema in this leg, and uh, now I've got it in this leg. Yeah, you sure do. And I got a long way to go. So have you rested? Have you slept during this race? I slept at uh, Bridger Jack for about 45 minutes. Did you put your feet above your heart when you slept? I didn't have it then. Okay. We've been fighting this since mile 66. At first it was these tenants here. Right. I had a couple of other uh, aid station people help me out with this. They were just so inflamed and red. And so they talked to me about um, Perfect. Yeah, Taking, yeah, uh, yeah. If it's if it's covered, I, I was wearing okay. compression right sleeve, yeah, yeah. and I and I was wearing the gaiters, and right. I think that's what kind of rubbed that right. the first time. It does. That and so we so took off the compression the at Bridger, but that's. Yeah. I mean, look, look look at this when you push that in like that. Yeah, I can see your pitting your demon. I mean, that's if if you can. Space. Are you gonna take it? Are you gonna sleep here? Yeah. I'm okay. Gonna, so what you need to do when you sleep here, you need to get your feet above your heart. And if you can do that, then it's going to put less stress. It's, your heart's not going to have to work so hard to get rid of that edema. If your feet are down It took like six or seven days to put that in. Once it swells up, then the, all the nerves in the leg feel like yeah. fire. Uh, I worked on my laptop in bed. Uh, Okay. With my legs raised yeah. and ice and alternate heat. For, uh, okay. I mean, yeah, was my first year here, so. I don't know what to do because. Yeah. Not so far. Yeah, you sure do. Yeah, uh, I don't care about the the pain. And I just don't know what. But like the last time we did this, I got stung by a wasp here, 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 right. and three behind the knee yeah. at five and a half yeah. miles in. So that the, doctors, the doctors all said that right that was reaction. a reaction on that. But uh, I didn't get, I mean, I'm facing this right there ain't nothing well. here. So I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's just from stress. I mean, you obviously stressed from a race not too long ago and then this 120 miles again. So, just did. so yeah. I mean, your best bet, your yeah. feet are good? You know what? This hurts so bad. I don't. I don't you don't need. You don't care about my feet. If I was you, I would. That, it, I would go to bed and I'd get your feet above your heart and take a two-hour. I mean, you got plenty of time right now. Uh, our cutoff here is 2:30, and you're not even 12. You, you bank more than 12 hours right now here. So 2:30 p.m. PM tomorrow. So even at 2:30 a.m., you're 12 hours bank. 
So your best bet is to take as long a nap as you can and get the, these feet above your heart when you lay down. Just make what, sure. what is this? What is that doing in, in that leg? The swelling? I mean, yeah, what's going on inside that leg? Is, yeah. I'm worried about any kind of damage or anything. No, I don't think so. I mean, it's just swelling from being on your feet for so long. Plus, uh, you probably didn't even recover from your last race. Uh, yeah. So it's just... It wasn't on purpose, but... Sure. That's just how the race is. Yeah, yeah, right on. I mean, it's, you just need to get off it. You need to get your feet up. Yeah. No, you have to. So you've already checked in here. Do everything you need to do here with it. So fill your nutrition, fill your bottles, whatever you got to do here. And then go to your car. I would come back. I would go to your car, get your nap, and then move, move on from there. Unless you feel like you need to come back here. Okay, if I could come back and grab some extra food, like after. Like, oh yeah, for hours. sure. Yeah. Ah, if you want in the front, right, right there. Yeah, I woke up yeah. handsomer. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they're right there. Did okay. someone reset your yeah, tracker you just, earlier? I mean, the swelling from the swelling from the uh, just being on your Yes. Feet. Oh, I got you. Yep. Sorry. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. It's complicated because I told my wife. After this happened, she was like, just be careful, don't, if it happens again, don't push it, don't be yeah. stupid. There's that one, like, so I got calm, this calm family down. issue, I gotta <laughs> calm down. Let's just get you warm. Let's get you warm. Well, you can deal with your wife later. Right now, it's, <laughs> <laughs> right now, you <laughs> No cell service, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, but eventually right, you will the... get reception. <laughs> Get your right, get your electrolytes, your water, whatever you need, and get your food, I'm, oh, and then go get off your feet. I think you'll I think you'll be surprised how much better it is if you just because like I said, you it's 2:30 tomorrow. You bank plenty of time right now. All right, spend two hours with your feet up. Do you want to go by the fire, Tony? No, I don't. Do yeah, I don't go by the fire. fire. Um, but the other gal. She's like, is this the first 200 you've done? And I said, yeah. And she said, well, walking is you know, different than running. So I asked her, can I just use my running stride, if, even if I'm going slow? We came out of Bridget Jack, and I was just crushing it for, you know, all the way No, it's fine. So what I do is I freaking mm -hmm. about but I was feeling so good. Uh -huh. Like I figured out my problems and what we were going to do. Okay. And then afterwards, wipe down the alcohol. And then and I'm sleep that, deprived and I'm tired and I'm cold yeah. and I'm hungry. Yeah. And so, huh? yeah. Get your, I just need to deal. Get your food in, get warm. Um, go to your car, get your feet up. All right. Okay, but you don't see anything immediate with this? No, I mean, you're obviously... You're not the only one that has edema uh, in a race like yeah, this. It's real common. I, I mean, it's because I always before you do have pitting edema. I mean, yeah. you can yeah. see. Yeah, and so I if it's worse at the next aid station, you feel like you can't go on, then that's your choice. But right. well, can't go on because of pain, or can't go on because of like the swelling. Like I need to know. I I would. I mean, I'd let you go out of here with that swelling. I think you'll be fine. But you need to get your feet up. Instead right, of, go, yeah, smart. the more time you sit around here, the more time you're wasting. But right. like I said, you at 2.30 a.m. this morning, you have 12 hours banked still. So spend a couple hours, I think 11 maybe. Oh, yeah. So I, at, Spend a couple hours, get your feet up. Okay. And you'll be you'll be surprised how much different it is. All right. Yeah. I appreciate you guys. I'm just wiped out. Yeah, I, I don't blame you. Uh, and that, that pain what I get, just... Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, I just want to open that up. I'll show you the, I got your bag. This okay. One, and then you can do the other one. All right. Small. Appreciate you. I'm going to go. Losing the poles. I got the poles. I got the poles. I got the poles. Oh. All right. I want to get something to eat. You just want to shed a light on it? That's what you got. Lentils. Oh, sorry. You're good. Yeah, I can't, I was thinking the same I don't want another fucking thing to be like right now. So just the hot lentils, I guess. I just have to deal with it. And then you got, you got, uh, the Cheetos and yes. Oreos. Yes, yes. I got you the Cheetos and Oreos. Let's get you laying down. Yeah, I'm going to go get in the truck and warm up. Oh, I'm so disappointed in injury. I've been fighting this injury since mile 66. 
and we we got it solved. We it was these tendons across the front. She's like, just go ahead and change up your stride, even when you're trying to walk, just run it, uh, run stride, even if you're going slow. And the pain from here subsided, didn't go away, but it made it bearable. We were able to get some miles in. And, you know, it's 40 hours in and I've got an hour of sleep, so. But you've been doing good. And I'm uh, cold, I was shivering down there. So I just need to reset. I just need to get in the car, eat them Cheetos and the Oreos and them stupid beans. <laughs> <laughs> But you've been kicking ass. You've been, you've been going ahead of time. You've been banking on time, Tony. Well, we we went, we got so far behind earlier because yeah. of that injury, and then we solved it, and we got almost caught up, and then, and then this happened again, and it's just like, I don't know, man. I know. Yeah, you're problem solving. You're doing a good job. Yeah, but I gotta problem solve, being safe and keeping. The, commitment to my wife about being smart going out here and I gotta figure out what that means. Yeah. But I'm not doing it till I sleep. Yep. Alright. All right, we're, we're just up here and off to your right. Okay. And then the truck should be up the hill, just a little hill. <laughs> should see the hill we just come up. I think I can yeah. do a little hill. Exactly. Is that it right there? No. no, a little bit further. Here's porter potties. You, would you like to visit one? No, no, no. no it takes too much effort. All right. You know, the highs and lows was we got, we, we struggled all day and then we got it figured out and we were just jamming. We were, we were doing such a good pace that we could keep up, you know, yeah. a couple times. We, and we're like, whoa, we're at 1230, back it down. But I mean, just for a smidge, but we tried to keep it between the 14 and the 16 mile pace. Was in, That's not bad after running 100 miles. Yeah. <coughs> so, yeah, we, uh, we went from being really low to really high to- And how do you manage that? This is the lowest I've been for a while. So. And how do you balance both? The dark and the good. Uh, yeah, I mean, you just gotta keep going. You, there's no, I mean, you get out there, there was a gal laying on the side of the trail with her emergency bivy on and her pacer was there with her and she's crying and shivering and there ain't nowhere to drop but to, I mean, it's an 18 mile section. Like, you're not gonna go backwards, so you have to climb over, over this hill. Yeah. And, uh, and she was super inspiring. She passed us a little while later. Whoa. She's laying, you know, laying there in the dark, and then all of a sudden she. Hey, Brandon. Oh. So yeah, so. I don't know. I mean, the goods, the goods are are uh, brief and exciting, and you know they're going to be there. And you hope the bads are brief and take you to a dark place where you learn something about it yourself. I, I learned a lot. I learned a lot today. Pencils. Randy learned a lot today too. Pencils. Pencils. So. They're cleaning up the back so we can just sit in the back. Uh, oh, mashed potatoes. Oh, we're gonna fill this in the back. Yeah, we're getting in the. Me and you're getting in the back seat. All right, I gotta, I gotta sit down and prop my feet. Here's what happened while I was elevating my legs and trying to get just a little bit of sleep. There's beds. Campfire. I, I like that. Fire yeah, get up near that fire. Thank you. That's your number. Uh, 57? 57? Yeah. Cool. Come on. Let's get you by the fire. Two should be coming up. If not, <laughs> we'll have to go get her. 
She slowed down a lot. Okay. You didn't see anybody just like hanging out on the trail? That was her. That was her? Okay, that's great. Like man. she was like, uh, I was climbing up and then I saw a headlight. And I thought maybe I was just okay, right over here. There's she, didn't, she didn't say anything, so I was like, maybe I'm just dreaming this. And then, okay, she's still there. Okay, it's a person. Oh. There's a chair over here. There's, okay, there's a chair over this way. Over here, follow the light. Right here, red chair. Thank you. I'm gonna reset your tracker to make sure that it doesn't go into standby, but you can be chilling while I do that. Mentally, I mean, it's it's rough. There's just no other way to say it. Like, you you have to overcome so many obstacles. I think every day, every every moment that you're out here, uh, pretty much every step you're wanting to stop and your your body is just throwing out as many excuses as it can to stop and say that you've had enough. So physically, I know he's torn up and he's done, but mentally, he's had that override to say, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep putting one foot in front of the other, mile after mile, and just get into wh whatever that next carrot is, whether it's an aid station, whether it's a flat or a down, or, um, you know, sometimes it's an up that, that you're actually hoping for a little bit of up if your quads are really burning. So who knows what what that carrot is throughout the race, but um, he's a master of identifying what those carrots are and then just getting to that next carrot throughout the race. So um, we're halfway, still a long way to go, but I have no doubt in my mind that he's going to do it. I, I feel very confident. There's a vibe in the air. There's something out here tonight. And, just with Tony when you see him that he's just gonna do it you know he just made up his mind he committed to it and he's gonna finish so stoked super excited to be here and witness all this and be a part of it even though it's tough being away from the family all you think about is the kids and the wife and you know you take time off of work you make all these sacrifices but when it's in the name of somebody like Tony and you're in service of an individual that that committed in life there's there it's you know i mean it's it's uh it's well worth it is an understatement so um he's got an ultra purpose and he puts it on the line and he's taking action and we're seeing it unfold so i feel super fortunate to be able to witness it we're at mile 121 this is the toughest thing that I remember doing in recent memory. It's waking up, making the decision to carry on, and getting my gear back on, getting out of the truck, and heading back out onto the trail. Well, if we would have left at 2.30 in the morning, it's about 3.15, but we would have had about 12 hours before cutoff at this aid station. So cutoff here is 2.30 p.m., so right out. We're not doing great, we're not doing like we were, but uh, you know, you gotta adjust, keep plugging away. So, yeah, uh, that 96 hour, uh, <laughs> the 96 hour goal has now become get across the finish line and uh, celebrate that. So that's what we're, that's what we're gonna do. All right, Albert, so you, you asked me when I was coming in here, how it kind of balanced the ups and downs. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. <laughs> you just gotta keep going. But, uh, man, you just, if you just don't give up, you get another shot. So that's what we're gonna do. We, we, didn't, we didn't give up, and we're gonna go get another another shot at this. And so we're gonna go celebrate life a little bit. So, let's get it. Go get it, man. Yeah, buddy. One holster. I don't think you got a shot of the leg before I put these pants on, but it's uh, girthy. Yeah, but it's sure looking good. good. The edema stuff, whatever, is gone. I mean, it's 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 still swollen, but it's not a. It's not, we, we're not having an issue with the uh, that pitting edema stuff. So, you know what? Are you just saying done. that for the video? Or no, man. I wish we would. I wish we would have got a shot of it because I mean, it's still swollen, but I was, I was pushing on it and. Nothing, nothing, it was bouncing right back out. So he had the aid station guy had the medic had me put my uh, 
Yeah, just just hold it. And yeah, just hold it. Yeah, while yeah. you button your jacket. Yeah. He had me uh, lay in the back seat with my feet up on the window so that that way all that swelling, he said, you got to get it above your heart. So I did that. And all that swelling kind of came out. So okay. that's what we're doing. And how about the other one? The other one's not too bad. It's a little swollen, but that was just kind of normal. Hey, I got 20 miles on it and how many hours we got in. <laughs> so far we've been out this for 45 hours. So. Yeah, man. It's warmer out here than it was in the truck when I was laying down. Alright, time to get back to work. Time to do it, man. <laughs> <laughs> messing around, hanging out. That's right, vacation. look. You don't want to get out, do you? Yeah, I didn't, but now that I'm out, I might just warm around here with my stuff on. It was in there. Right. Good. At least you're comfortable, too, though. Yeah. How are you doing? Yeah, not bad. Now, yeah. yeah, I had a snooze, which I haven't had since the start, so. Yeah. Uh, huge difference. I had an hour at. Uh, Jack. Could you deck? Did you? Yeah, yeah I, I couldn't do it. Dirt. Yeah, I couldn't do it. And then kind of two hours here, maybe. Right. Yeah, actually similar to me. Then. Uh, and, and it felt good. I yeah. I needed it, and it was easy then. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good. We'll see you guys out there. Yeah, man. Good, good job. Good, good job. Good work. Brother. All right. Where's my pack? You got it. All right. Let me. Uh, so. What the hell? Well, you look good, man. You want to help him out? Here, I'll hold the poles, and you can help him out. Tiny bubbles. Got it. There you go. See you, Tony. Hi, <laughs> right, brother. Love you. Yeah, give me some Thanks, buddy. All right, we got another round two coming up pretty quick. Right bottles all over. Some brothers right there. No, 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 you're just lactating. <laughs> All right, good luck. All right, thanks. Let's go, well. Wow. See you at the next one. You're a fucking animal. Alright, let's go, let's go, let's go. Alright, brother. See you guys later. Alright, man. See you, brother. See you. All right, where are we at? We are probably mile 130 right now, and you've been trucking it through, man, just soldiering. Your foot's doing bad, but you've come to grips with it's not gonna get a whole lot better, and it won't get a whole lot worse. So, managing those cycles really well, and uh, I think we are at five o'clock in the morning, probably got another hour. It's almost time. six. Is it almost it's five five fifty four now? Five fifty four. Yeah. Nice. All right. So we got a little bit of time Sunrise. before the sun comes up. Yeah. Brandon's in the big old puffy jacket and about enough layers he could start a clothing store. <laughs> <laughs> I made him layer up, so it was God. it was cold. Still see the breath. I'm in I'm in this big old winter jacket. I don't know if you can see it. Winter hat. Took my gloves off. Feels pretty good. But uh, yeah, it was cold this morning. I think it would just say up on the top 34. of that 34 degrees. And you know, the night, this this part of the day is always so hard. So yeah, there's a confidence ribbon over there. Um, but it's uh, the sun's about to come up and when that happens, and it's a whole new day. You can see a lot more of the trail. You can kind of gauge normally you know what your pace should be my pace is pretty much set i think from here on out after moving through the dark and into the daylight my left leg continued to be problematic and it again got to the point that i was having to make the decision about the final outcome of this race i sent brandon on ahead my pacer so i could kept this moment by myself so i'm struggling with a couple of things and i came out here I said there was only going to be two ways to get off this course. First one was to 
finish. And the second one was to be timed out. So meaning I missed a cutoff at an aid station or something like that. But I mean, at this point, the ankle's in pretty bad shape. So I'm struggling with how stubborn do I want to be? There's, there's a chance I could still make all the cutoffs and the finish, <clears throat> but I have to get this taken care of at every aid station. They're gonna have to ice or elevate. So, you know, that's an hour at least at the aid station to try to minimize that. And so, how much do I wanna do for that? How much uh, suffering and misery do I want to go through and how much damage do I want to do to my body to then miss the cutoff so that's a real big internal struggle especially when you factor in you know what Pam told me was have fun be smart, be safe. Like, I don't know. I still have like 103 miles to go. Something like that. Like around 100. So, I don't know what to do. I mean, I'm still out here. I'm still moving. But, I mean, here's, here's the leg so far. Look at that. Watch when they push in there. Watch. See how it just stays? See that? The indentations. So I don't know what that actually does to the body. How long it's going to take to recover. If I have any nerve damage. Every aid station is worked on me and got me out got me out the door but the last one I was I was there almost three hours and 15 minutes or something by the time I got in saw medical slept in the doing not even really sleep I mean I was in the truck but he wanted me to elevate my feet so I laid on the back seat but when you start to doze and if you're a runner, sometimes this happens, might happen to other people too, but you, uh, if you've been moving for a while, your mind, your brain still thinks that you're moving. And so like it'll think you're falling or whatever, or it'll just uh, spasm. So that was happening to me last night. And every time it would spasm, I mean, absolutely, it would wake me up and it was the sharpest, sharpest pains. But I'm not a quitter. <clears throat> so I don't want to use that as an excuse. But I don't know if it's an excuse or a reason. And that's what I'm struggling with. So it's beautiful out here. <laughs> right now I'm moving at a 27.10 pace, which if I was able to do that for the remainder of the race. I'd be able to finish but again I'm gonna need an hour or so at each aid station so I really want to finish man <clears throat> I put a lot of training into this <clears throat> a lot of people have been supporting me Brandon's here Albert's here, Randy's here. They all took time out to come help me make this happen. They've been training with me. I don't wanna be dumb, but I don't wanna look back and say, eh, quit because you couldn't hack it. Like if it was just pain, you know, 
pain, you, you heard me say before, pain isn't real, like, yeah, it's just something your mind <laughs> does with its imagination to get you to change your behavior. But the cause of the pain is real. So you need to be able to deal with that. And I don't know if the cause of this pain is a reason to not continue or if it's just pain and in a couple of weeks the leg goes back to normal. So I don't have any answers. That's where I'm at. We've made it to the Dry Valley Aid Station. What's up, buddy? How you feeling? I'm feeling mixed emotions, buddy. Mixed emotion? Yeah. How's this that? This leg is slowing me down. The rig is to the side over here. But, uh, I don't know how Brandon was able to get a signal up on the top of that. Up on top of that. Yeah. Wow. So I was able to have a conversation with my wife Pam awesome. about my situation and a game plan. And she said, as long as they, uh, as long as the medical team gives me the thumbs up, every aid station she supports me going out and finishing, even if I come home with this leg all swollen. So. Wow. So. I think we're still going to be chasing some cutoff times just based on how much it hurts with every step, but you know, I've always, you've seen me, peaks and valleys, baby, peaks and valleys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that was, that was a pretty good call. I had that about half hour ago, maybe, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Talked to her for about 20 minutes before we lost the call, so, which is really weird because I don't I've never been able to get a cell signal out here when I'm out here. Wow. With the razors and stuff. So you think that was a sign? I think. That she gave you? I think it was. She's like, hey, take care. She said, we think you're all crazy, but she also said, how many did you people, how many people did you say started? Yeah, something like that. And there's, right now there's 202. And even with this stuff I've been dealing with, and it could have changed since up there, but I was number 100. Wow. So dead in the middle of the pack. So there's a lot of people out there gonna finish way ahead of me. There's a lot of people behind me that'll pass me in the next two days. But I don't really care. I just wanna, the goals change as you're coming out here, so. But yeah, I'm pretty happy about that conversation. That, that makes a, my, decisions and my actions a whole lot easier when I know that we're going to be on the same page for that so yeah yeah and it's the same one right it's not the other one the other one's fine uh well this is the one this is the right did the right one at bear a couple weeks ago or but that I, one's a good one or that one's better yeah that one's better now it's the the, the uh, left leg that I've been dealing with so, so it's just kind of wow. weird you never know yeah but everybody's dealing with something. We've been talking to people on this. I got it. Yeah, that's, that's how you, Randy taught me this. Ooh. After a while, been an over. Pretty, pretty much. <laughs> last thing you want to do, so. <laughs> grabbing that like that. Works out pretty good. Tricks of the trail. What a pro. Tricks of the trail. Yeah. <laughs> Man, getting out of the truck this morning. Mm -hmm. After laying in the, that back seat with my legs cramping up and spasm and just hollering out in my sleep how much it hurt. Uh, and then shivering from that. Not being able to control my body temperature and still all that. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I mean, my mind's not super clear right now because oh, yeah. I've been up for a lot of hours. Yeah. But it's one of the hardest things I've ever done is getting out of that. It would have been so e so easy to say, can't do it. Yeah. But here I am, another 19 miles in. 
Wow. Still plugging away. Yep. So I'm gonna grab some food. Oh, where's yeah, the medical over here? Medical's guys? over here. What would you like to eat? They have breakfast uh, taco or burritos. They have corn tortillas. Yeah. yeah. Uh, with eggs. Can they just throw a bunch of eggs and cheese and hash browns into some lots of cheese? Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna go in here if you wanna. Sounds good. I'll start that. Okay. That'll be good. Yeah. Cause I'm doing. I mean, ups, downs, or flats. The best I can do is about a 24-minute mile. So I'm I'm gonna be fighting that final cutoff. Well, good news is this next two stretches are flat. flat, flat, really yeah. nice. Flat. Yeah, so you won't yeah. be you're still on your feet. Huh? Flat, flat. Yeah. 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 I like flat. <laughs> yeah. So we can tape just tape the sides of. Well, what I want to do is put some ice on it first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we'll do that, uh, and then I'm gonna take your hand, and then I'll get your tape. Right. Okay. okay. I appreciate you. Thank you. Do you need anything to eat? Uh, uh, one of my guys is getting me some stuff. Okay. Oh, you just knocked that, knocked that out. Oh, it's knocked out, bro. This looks fucking amazing. Yeah. That looks amazing, man. Oh, yeah. You might have to come back next year just for that. Like I said, we'll uh... All right. You'll see the pack out. Make sure you get yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. And your shivering is definitely just the tea. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see that one. Yeah. They're starting to you know, have things up like that. And all that fluid's draining out. I mean, it's supposed to, but it's painful. Really? The good thing is, but it has to happen. There's no way for me to get back out there. Oh, and, oh, and it's just going to keep swallowing because yeah. you're, and you're on your feet. I mean, if yeah. you weren't doing this, somebody would be like, well, you know, keep your feet elevated, yeah. stay at home, don't do anything. Well, <laughs> yeah. Next week. Yeah. So that's two weeks in there. Okay. I can tape it if you wish. I think maybe if it could give me a little stability with it. Yeah. Okay. That would be good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But we'll leave that on. Yeah. yeah. So okay. what we're going to do. Okay, we're gonna take care of that situation. Good stuff. I think this one's fine. I told him. Yeah, you know, having to run the last hundred miles. Oh, it's starting to get really painful. The draining again. Who's from Chicago originally? What part? Um. Okay. Uh, what are they saying? Oh yeah, the 96 hour pace, yeah. but I told her we're going to be somewhere between maybe 110 and 112 and chasing cutoffs every aid station with this with the injuries because it's just the way it is, slowing me down. I paid money for this. <laughs> and think about this. I've been out here for a while, 140 miles. I still got 100 to go. But I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start checking, checking down into the double digits at that point. So that'll be cool. Yeah. Worst I've ever seen, Tony. The darkest, darkest place I've ever seen, Tony. And he just fought through it and fought through it and fought through it. He was done. He was done, and then I don't know what it was, but we summited this place and this plateau of a mesa. Mm -hmm. And he asked me if I had cell phone reception, and I looked at him like, I, "Who has cell phone reception right now?" And we haven't had cell phone reception all day or last night, anytime. You don't get cell phone reception out here. So I said, "Well, Tony, I'll give it a shot, man." I took my phone off of airplane mode, went to the cell data, two bars. I said, it must be your lucky day. But if you want to make a phone call, here you go. And it was right at the top of a mesa where like, if there was cell phone reception, it was gonna be only right here. And so, there was probably a couple miles of flat. Gave him my phone, he called his wife, talked to his daughter. That changed everything. Whatever was said on that phone call, that was it. Yeah. So, he's gonna finish though. Before that phone call, I don't think, I don't think he was gonna do it.
Okay, where are we? His spirit wasn't there. Oh, you got that? But he talked to his wife. He kept telling me too. He's like, I need, I need some approval from from Pam. So he got it. We leave Dry Valley Aid Station with fresh bandages taped on my ankle, and we head back out onto the trail for a long, flat section of dirt road. I can't guy. keep up with him. I can't keep up with this guy. See you later, Tony. Feeling good. Looking strong. He went to the medic. And he took care of him. Gave him some good bandages. Taped it, wrapped it, elevated it. Kind of put an ace bandage wrap as if I rolled it to give it a little extra. Stability. I'm doing an 1850 pace, which I haven't seen that pace all day. Stability helping with the stability. It's still painful. It's still painful, but it's, I can put a little push off of it without it wobbling so much. So, at least with the pain, I'm getting a little bit of Officially on a street we call the stretch of hell. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah, Tony is in love with it. I on the other hand. I won't say run but walk flat. And kind of power through a little bit. I say power through. I'm talking about like a 20 minute pace, but hey man. He's moving good. Look at that. Look at that. He's up there. moving We're great. The mountains. Yeah, there we go. There's the LaSalle Mountains where Tony's headed to next with Randy. All right, so Tony, we are third day, two full nights. Tell me about. Your hardest parts, what have been the biggest struggles and triumphs? You said, you said two full nights. I don't remember that. You don't remember two full nights? Uh -uh. So, mm, it's Friday night. Okay. Friday night was a full night. Okay. And then last night, me and you went through a full night. What did I do Friday night? Friday night, you were so low. Oh. Yeah, and that's when Randy picked me up at 71, right? Here we go. Whistleblower, campground, aid station. Wind whistle? Wind whistle? Yeah. Wind whistle. Wind whistle, aid station. Boom! We Boom. made it. Yeah. We're almost there. It's right over there. Almost there. Right over here. Okay. This is actually really beautiful. Really beautiful rocks and plants here. <laughs> yeah, it's my favorite, <laughs> rocks and plants. Rocks and plants. Hopefully they have some good food here. We get to the Road 46 aid station. I see my crew and we get a little bit of food to eat and then we get back in the crew vehicle so that I can once again elevate the legs and we can strategize a little bit on the timing of getting me back out on the course and seeing if I can still make the cutoffs. So let's check in with uh, oh Yeah, where's check in? Check in. Check in right here. 36 in. Are you checking in? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Sorry. 30, 36 in. I got the pants. Yeah, 36. 36. Got you. Okay, we have to check out too? Mandatory check out. Just going to enter into this group right here. Okay. Can't let you on the mountain until you check out. Well, I'm not ready to go for a little bit. Okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then I got a mark. Hi. Hey, run out. Ooh, 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Over here. Oh, good. Now we're hanging in. Good. Yeah, this, this is my best day so far. Right? Good. I struggled the first couple, so this was good. Ankle still jacked, but it's swollen to the Get point me where you need to go. Still going. Yeah. <laughs> what can we get you to eat? Uh, what do you have that's hot? Let's do that. The more new stuff, the better. Yeah. I uh, I would if I have one more. Cheese quesadilla and corn tortilla. <laughs> I will. That will I will not dry be good. out from the inside. I also have cheese and egg and cheese for you. In there. In there. And the hot Cheetos. We and got hot that. Cheetos. Man, you are you are good. <laughs> we are ready to go. All right. Um, I thought of it. <laughs> started off a little rough going going down now, but once once we got to you're walking better. Yeah. Once we got to the roads, yeah. Okay. Road 46, dry, dry, long, and dry, something. Oh, dry creek? No, um, there you go. You do that yesterday. Anyways, dry something there. Um, yeah, I'm gonna put my feet up. I'm not taking off my shoes or my socks. I've got a really good program. Uh, one of the aid stations they set me up so okay. unfortunately I'm gonna lay in the back here with them up and uh, just oh. hey Randy what's up <laughs> Get in there. okay how are you man just give me a second no touch dude oh, no touch and touch. thank you thank you for being for that man all right dude he yeah, man, it's uh, it's not easy. No, nah, it wasn't easy. No, nah, it's uh, that was tough. That that ranks up there, one of the toughest ones for sure. That was hardcore. So we we showed up here at eleven. Yeah, man, that's cutting it so close. We gotta go. So Could you imagine? We're gonna be at leaving. You'll be leaving Horse Creek, or be in Horse Creek tomorrow night at eleven eight fifteen. We still have what eighty seven miles or something, and then we only have a five hour leeway. Mm-hmm. We uh, yeah, we gotta go. I can't be. Invest in 112 hours to come across the finish line 10 minutes late. I would not. I would not. I'll put your clothes on. You got a lot of rules. All right, man. We're out. Good job, dude. 19 miles or something? I don't know. Yeah. 17 next time. Oh, no, 19. 19.7. So. Alright. Alright, we gotta get out of here. Yeah. We're gonna check your gear, making sure you got everything. I'm gonna send you right up. Well, I'm wearing just about everything they need. <laughs> yeah, so. Are you sweating? Are you hot in there? You good? No, no, it's good. Yeah. And why do they do this? Why do they check in? Uh, why do you just so they know who's out on the course, especially at night when it's cold up in the mountains. Make sure you have the mandatory gear. Uh, oh, okay. so yeah, thir 36 has already been in. Now I'm heading out. Okay. Uh, All right. Can we come over here? I'm going to check some gear real quick. Uh, yeah, I'm wearing, I think I'm wearing everything you need to. Okay. I hope I don't have to take it out of my pack. No, no, don't worry. I won't make that. Let me just do a quick visual. So yep. right. Head warm. You have a yeah. rain jacket, like a cover. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's your the pants. ultimate direction. I'm wearing my pants. So you, got, you have extra uh, uh, batteries for your headlamp? Yep. You have an uh, emergency bivy or? Yep, the one that came okay, from the race. 500 backup calories? Yep. Okay, um, you have your phone with a course mat. Yep. And you have right a here. whistle on your pack. Yep. Pacer, you have all the same. Let's see. Okay. Um, yeah, you're all good. 36? Yeah, man. Okay. Thanks, sir. Yeah, yeah we're gonna try to. Uh, we're gonna run it now, right? Yeah, we're gonna go finish this off <laughs> in the next four or five hours. Or so. <laughs> maybe three, got, maybe three. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to show off or anything, so I'll probably back it down a little bit. But, <laughs> don't want to make people feel bad. Yeah. Oh, don't get hit by the U-Haul.
Alright, I appreciate you guys being no out problem. here. I appreciate you. you handling it. Take care of business yeah. out there. Yep. Let's do it. We're leaving road 46 aid station and we're headed back up the mountain to the Pole Canyon aid station. How's it going today, Tony? It's going good. <laughs> I'm pretty loopy. I'm hearing myself talk. But not really being the one that's saying stuff. Um, the other Tony's coming up? Well, I'm mean, like, I can. I don't know. Like, I'm saying it, but it's supposed to be inside voices. <laughs> inside my head. Um, yeah, I'm pretty. Pretty tired, but the sun's starting to come up. Did you get a oh. shot of that? Not yet. Yeah, so. <laughs> We're doing all right. All right. Doing all right. Still got to go up that. And you probably can't see it, it's too dark for the camera still. But anyway. Good morning. <clears throat> That's what he says. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and now Monday. I gotta get up this hill, but this foot, every step I take, just hurts. And then the rocks are rocky. Yeah. They're like, they move around. Loose rocks. Yeah, so, anyway, I kind of come and go. So I would like a little bit of a nap. Randy owes me one minute. <laughs> I do. But I got a two minute nap, because I just laid down, but I only woke up after one minute. <clears throat> Something about TikTok. <clears throat> Whatever. Gave me a little boost for a little bit. And now, here we are again. But it looks like all we gotta do is just go up here, and then go that way, and then go that way, and then go that way, and then go around that way. And then we come back. And then come back down this way. And then we... Somewhere. And then we wind up going the other way. And then we go into Moa. Moab after we get our 201 then we just get through the last 40 whatever pretty much done so I mean we're pretty much done except for two more days of doing this <laughs> and it's the hard rocky stuff at this point I'm walking and sleeping and falling asleep, and I'm trying to play it off like it didn't happen. Before we were going to go up to around 10,000 feet. Uh, now we're just going to go around them on an ATV trail, hook up back onto the trail that we were planning on, and then um, we'll go back to Horse Creek. And once at Horse Creek, I will have... I got it. <laughs> Shut <it up. laughs> Look at that. This was the most sleep deprived I've ever been and it was really starting to affect me physically and mentally. Oh, I don't know what I think. 
Like, this is good. <laughs> Just trying to do anything to keep people awake. I know. This... That's my nailing it, too. You're <laughs> doing pretty good. <laughs> Take yourself a nap. It was a long morning. It was a long morning. Now I'll get you a... Um, I made it to the Pole Canyon Aid Station. And the medical teams that have helped me throughout the race really had a big effect on my ability to continue this far. But Lori Enlau was my angel. She helped me even when I was sleeping. I laid down on a cot and I'm not sure how my shoes and socks got off, but when I woke up, uh, magical things had happened to my feet and to my legs. I'm a new man coming out of that. Went to Pole Canyon Aid Station. Fantastic people there. Great setup. Good food. They took care of me. I went in. You know, I was so tired. I went in and laid down in their little tent. They had a little fire in their little tent, actually, uh, which was cool. So it was already kind of warm. So I went to sleep I took off my shoes and I think honestly I don't even remember who took my shoes off the uh the uh, medic her she took them off all yeah. I did was lay down on the little cot in there passed out I woke up with new new socks on my shoe on my feet all blister care was taken care of uh, taped my leg um, But I was passed out. I mean pulling on it to try to get all the gauze and or uh, ace bandage that have been taped to the leg and everything All that was pulled off. I don't remember any of it. I just remember laying down And I asked her what other aid station she'd been at and She said probably meh, probably the Oasis, but she had bounced around and uh after that, I you remember know, I had some food somehow. Randy, did you bring me that food? Mm-hmm. 
It's scrambled, I had mm -hmm. some eggs, scrambled eggs, hash browns, cheese, guacamole, salsa, and uh, yeah, man, pounded that down. I'm, I don't even remember. I probably ate it in my sleep. Uh, a little tortilla chips and was out. And I slept for about an hour. And now we're headed back out of that aid station to go conquer this new uh, alternate snow route. They've had to change it because we got a big storm moving in. And It's like we had the storm coming in already. It's uh, 11.45 on a on Monday. Storm should be here tomorrow night, tomorrow. So we're picking up our pace a little bit. Here goes Tony. He has found his second wind. Again, we're 188 miles in. Randy's up here pacing me. Doing a great job. <laughs> Just got my pole caught on the bush. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Good job, guys. The trail was rocky and loose, and after we both stepped on a loose rock, we joked that the trail was eventually going to get one of us. Whoop! That same rock is <laughs> You just sent me. Funny. It's like, I'll get one of you. That could have been ugly. Yeah. All right, so quarter mile past the last video I just did. I don't know what I did, but I did a like a runway dive down. <laughs> Going downhill. It's the worst spill I've ever taken. Smashed my face straight into the ro rocks on the trail. My toes must have kept cut a cut a rock, but. Smashed my glasses, broke my GoPro handle, uh, cut up my hand, cut up my other hand. My lips kind of puffy, I think. Oh yeah, shit, it's ble yeah, it's bleeding. Yeah. Well. I mean, ankle? yeah. All right, well, that was fun. <laughs> oh, he could wake me up. I'm gonna have to clean my glasses at some point. This is all tailwind, it's all sticky. But I'm not gonna do it now. <laughs> there was people behind us that saw it. I gotta get away from them. <laughs> that happen. That happen. Uh, yeah, yeah. If nobody else sees it, then it didn't happen. I really don't know what I caught. Rock? Well, I mean, I know it was rock, but like, I just... It's loose. I mean, just, this stuff is just loose and gives away when you land on mm -hmm. it. You just kind of went flipping. Yep. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. All right. Got to go. That was fun. I have all my teeth, though. That's pretty good. <laughs> For as hard as I smack my face. That's what I was more concerned about. You hit something in your eyeball. Ooh, right in my eyeball. Since we're gonna talk about secrets, Randy fell in the mud hole. <laughs> Cut his hand all up. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Got his feet all wet, all muddy. They dry. Some people are like, hey, this is a better way to go up and over and around this way. And Randy's like, oh yeah, we came down this way. We 
we got it figured out. We all good. So, yeah, we made it coming down this way, but <laughs> Randy almost fell backwards, <laughs> right into the mud. Trying to get it. His feet wet. Was able to save himself a second time. I am, on the other hand, not able to save myself. <laughs> from falling. <laughs> Are you trying to recreate this yeah, one? Yeah, it was basically like that, but downhill. So I just kept picking up speed. And after about the third recovery that I thought, God, I'm gonna pull out of this. Total wipeout. Smashed my head, face, hand, watch, snapped my GoPro handle, blew out one of my bottles. I'm laying there, down, <laughs> face first on the ground, my legs are out behind me. All of a sudden I feel this liquid running all across me. I'm like, oh Lord, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna bleed out. <laughs> Turns out it was just tailwind, one of my bottles busted. <laughs> so, fat lip, swollen cheek. It's all fun, it's all part of it. Rubbing, and I keep hearing something rub, it's the tongue. Maybe it's still not fixed right. Yeah, it's still every step. See what? Uh, take a step. This. Rubs up and. Yeah. Rubs up and down against that. You got an uh, eighth band just too? No. She took that off? Yeah. That's actually probably why the swelling's already happening. Well, that's actually the only thing. I went through three aid stations without having them take any my okay. shoe off. Two. After that, because. Trying to make the pain go away. So. Yeah, that's better. A little bit more stability. Tony Rockets is the freaking hands. Got to say. Uh, well, let's see. The last aid station was 184.9, and we've gone 14.33. So here in, in a minute, we're gonna be breaking that 200 mark, and then it's just the last 40 to go. Woohoo! Woo and we're done. Then we get the heat out. That would be great. good well water station is done heading to horse creek yeah well maybe you know what i'm talking about he's probably off pacing duty but even if he's off pacing duty it's not much of a break got a lot of other planning he's got to do to be able to come back Pick me up at Port Pine Rib to the finish line. Getting close can smell it, you know. It's funny because I got 240 miles. Doing 200. We're almost, we're almost there. But 40 miles is still 40 miles. 40 miles, 40 miles. Nothing can go wrong. You're just spraining it. A lot of ankles. 
bust a lot of lips. Fall on your face a lot. So, gotta take it every step at a time, but we're getting closer. We're getting closer. Pretty epic. Heading up the snow reroute. This route kind of sucks. <laughs> All the roads aren't my favorite. And at Hortz Creek Aid Station, I met with my crew. I was able to get in the crew vehicle. Once again, it's dark, it's windy, it's cold. The wind is blowing in. You can really feel the storm coming in. And uh, I was so thankful. My crew showed up with uh, an entire pizza just for me. I ate three quarters of the pizza in the crew vehicle while we were preparing. And then I took the rest on the trail headed back out into the dark. I don't know how many hours I've been out here, but we plan on finishing. Well, yeah, I don't know. But, uh, but I've been out here for at least 90 some hours. Yeah, I sort of sleep like three and a, three and a half hours. <laughs> Whatever, <laughs> you can do the math. You are, some people might say, you're, uh, you're crazy. What'd you tell those people? Uh, they might not be wrong. You know, we're all our own kind of crazy, but I think it's just finding something that you identify with, that makes you happy, that gives you some sort of personal self-worth and that you can continue to improve. So it's like, you know, what... Somebody can have a hobby that they really like, and some people dabble in it, and some people take it to the extreme. So you're laser focused. Yeah. I just, the more I do it, the more I um, want to see what's next. As we approach Porcupine Aid Station, I see that my crew is not there yet. And uh, I'm starting to worry a little bit. Albert has taken me through the last 12 miles, but Randy really was the one that was prepared to take me from, from that point through the rest of the race. So at this point, I don't have my crew. I'm not able to swap out my pacer. I've broken my glasses, my watch had died, I have a low battery on my phone and I need to be able to check it to make sure that I'm on course because of the rain and the wind and the storm that had blown in. I really need to make sure that I don't get off course. At this point, I take off without my crew and I go back up into the porcupine rim section of the trail.
Even though Randy had paced me in many races and he told me I would have plenty of time to finish in under my new sub 100 hour goal, my brain just couldn't register it and since my watch battery had died, I was using a pace tracking app on my phone and even though I was checking the app, I couldn't figure out what pace it was saying and whether or not I was going to make my goal. So I kept pulling it out of my pocket, looking at it, not comprehending what it was saying, putting it back in my pocket and I would do that repeatedly even though I really had no idea what it was saying. I was trying to make sense of it all to see if I was going to be able to make it to the end. Come on, Tony, your whole family's here. 
Talk to nobody. Why you don't have talk? I just had a dare. Yeah. I wanted to get. Look at this. My son. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Love it. I didn't see it. It was off camouflage for me. Yeah, you can't see. It's all right. Oh my God. I love you, buddy. Oh, you did such a good job. Last so <laughs> uh, little bit was tough. Oh my God. The man. rain. The rain started coming down up there, and the the waters. Coming down, I had to stop and put on all my rain gear plus the emergency bivy. All right. All right. Let's go for a run. All right. Coming out. Oh my God. Yeah. I feel it today. What would you tell someone who who's thinking about not doing it, but thinking about doing the Moab 240? What would you tell? A lot of people think about a lot of things. So what I would say is, if you either do it or don't, stop thinking about it. Right? Commit or let it go. It's funny because yesterday I had no cell signal, but I can't remember what I was doing. I was looking for something. I noticed I had cell signal, and so Facebook had my memories. One year ago today, I posted, or one year ago yesterday, it was, it was late at night, uh, the Moab 240, just found out about this race, it's on my bucket list. And that was yesterday. I'm running the last, through the last night of it. So I took a screenshot of the, uh, of the memory for it, so. Check. Yeah, Knock that yeah. out. Congratulations. Yeah, man. Oh so, God. so what's next? I'm gonna go hug and kiss my family. <laughs> what? <laughs> I've made it across the finish line of the Moab 240, and I'm gonna leave you with some memories that I had, just some captured moments of me with my family my crew, my pacers. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed running it, and uh, hopefully we'll see you out on the Moab 240 trail sometime.